I request Dean of Student Welfare, Dr. Sanjay Naranji, to welcome our guest by presenting bouquet. Dr. Sanjay Naranji. Kindly keep on applauding the symposium on role of educational institution in fighting the men's of drugs. I, Dr. Tara Devi Singh, on behalf of Sardar Patel University Mandi, welcome our chief guest of the day, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Sardar Patel University, Professor C. L. Chandanji. <laughs> Sir, under your leadership, we all are assembled here to framework a roadmap for fighting the biggest social evil of our society, that is the men's of drugs. A heartfelt welcome to you, sir. We are highly honored and privileged to have with us our keynote speaker, Shri O.P. Sharmaji, State Convener come advisor of the Himachal Pradesh Nasaan Board, who has many feathers in his cap and rigorously working to eradicate the men's of drugs. A hearty welcome to you, sir. Under your guidance, we will definitely able to seek solution against the men's of drugs for well-being of our society. I welcome other faculty members of Sardar Patel University, teaching and non-teaching staff, as well as dear students, who are the real messenger to spread the message to eradicate the men's of drug. A heartfelt welcome to you all. Now I request Ms. Sakshi and Bhavna to pin up the rose to our guest. Honorable Vice Chancellor of Sardar Patel University, Professor C. L. Chandanji, to felicitate our keynote speaker, Shri O. P. Sharmaji, with shawl, topi, and smriti chin as a token of love and respect. I request our guest on dice to lighten the auspicious lamp. Ms. Sakshi may facilitate the candle to our guest. There is a famous saying that, Asto ma sad gamya, tamso ma jyote gamya, mrityar ma amrit gamya. The essence of lamp lightning may light leads us from the path of untruth to truth, darkness to light and death to life. I repeat, asto ma sad gamya. I request Dr. Sanjay Naran. Dean of Student Welfare to present bouquet to our another guest, Professor of Geography Sanjay Saigalji. I request Logi Department for Saraswati Bandana. <laughs> Thank you girls. Moving forward, I request an architect and founding pillar of Sardar Patel University, an originator of multifarious notion, a symbol of great wisdom, knowledge and leadership, well, Chief Guest of the Day, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Sardar Patel University, Professor C. L. Chandanji, for his inaugural address. Welcome, you, sir. It's my pride privilege to welcome Shri Opi Sharmanji to this campus. There can be no better person to speak on this topic which we have selected for today, the menace of drugs, than Mr. Opi Sharma. I have a long association with Mr. O.P. Sharma, uh, right from, from his uh, student career and because of his sheer hard work and intelligence that he has done a wonderful work in controlling the menace of drug in Himachal Pradesh. Sri O.P. Sharma ji, before joining the Nasha Nivaran board of Himachal Pradesh, of which he is a founding, you know, chairman. Uh, and uh, he has done a uh, pioneering work in establishing this board in Himachal Pradesh. Before this assignment, he was working for NCB, the Narcotics Control Bureau of India, the premier agency which is looking after the control of drugs and prevention of spreading of this 
he has done a lot of work. Uh, the details uh, Dr. Tara will uh, give when she give a formal introduction of Shri Sharma ji. Uh, so, uh, it is my pleasure and it is my privilege to welcome uh, such an eminent speaker to this uh, symposium on how to prevent the menace of drug in our country. If you ask me what is the most important problem that the country is facing today apart from the external threat, then I will say there are two problems that we are facing from within. One is the threat to the national integrity from international elements who are operating their sleeper cells and who are being, which are being operated by the foreign powers. And the second is the menace of drugs. But I feel that the menace of drug is even more dangerous than the uh, anti-national elements like terrorist organizations, Naxalites and various other groups which are trying to break the country. So, because the, it is easier to handle because they are limited to certain areas only. They have not permeated into the society as such. They are not part of the larger society. They are certain sections and operating in certain particular areas. It is, diff it is easier to control them. But checking the drugs is more difficult and it is more harmful and dangerous for the nation. Because uh, this menace of drug is affecting the adolescent and youth of the country. That is the target section which it is affecting. So that means this problem is actually, I will rather call it an epidemic to the whole country. And this is a premier agency and you must have heard about various news items which were on the news. Uh, Riya Chakravarti and then Shah Rukh Khan's son. All these cases are being handled, handled, handled by NCB. So this is a national level agency who has an independent, uh, independent, you know, access and can do its investigation in any part of the country without the permission of the state government. Like Central Bureau of Investigation, Enforcement Directorate, this is one of the premier agencies of the country. And uh, while serving in this agency, I have been uh, tracking uh, regularly in the newspapers and in the other media the work that was done by Shri Opish's spread of drug menace, then the future of the country will be destroyed. We know the example of China. Many of you may, know, may, be, may be aware, uh, and Dr. Deepak who teaches history in China, <laughs> so he may be aware. There was a time when more than half of the population of China was consuming opium. We talk of trade route and there was also an opium route. So, if such like situation comes, it is very bad for any country. This is not a national problem only. This actually has acquired international dimensions. You know about two famous uh, one is uh, two famous areas from the entire drug business operates. One is called the Kluts, Thailand, Myanmar and Vietnam. And the other is the Golden Crescent, which includes Afghanistan, Pakistan and Iran. And these are the places from where the drugs originate. And ultimately these drugs pass to western countries and to the Middle East countries through the route is through India. So in India also, there is a huge, you know, system or a mafia which is operating. It is very important. Though the authorities and the governments have been conscious about this and they have made various legislative measures also, all of you know that the most stringent punishment, uh, even more stringent than the death and, uh, sorry, uh, murder and the rape is in case of uh, uh, narcotics. But still, this business is flourishing in India also. And the cause of concern is that the drugs, they do not, uh, not only destroy the individual. For the individual, you know, it destroys him physically, mentally and morally. A person who is addicted of drugs will be ready to do anything. There is no morality for him. 
you know so most of the crimes are also and even most of the terrorist activities also conducted by the people who consume drugs apart from this they have their ramifications their impact on the uh, family the society and the nation now in order to to take care of this menace for that uh, for remedies you need to diagnose the disease disease first so what are the causes of spread of drug business and drug menace in india i don't know dr sharma will give the authentic and the uh, uh, you know official version uh, as a layman who is not an expert uh, in uh, narcotics and the related things i would say that availability is the first and the most important cause this this any crime for that matter not only drugs but for any crime if the government is able to control the availability then they will be able to stop you know so checking the pollution from the source you know if the source is polluted the source from where the drugs are coming if you operate at that level that is the easier thing to easiest thing to do but once the drug reaches the Uh, society and the people who are trading in this and uh, who are consuming the drugs then it is a tedious task to control so the focus should be on making availability dif- not only difficult but also impossible uh, for the people and the second and uh, the cause to my mind is the uh, present structure of our family and the society at the family level the parents are not devoting sufficient time for their children parents are too busy in their own work as a result they do not know about the activities of their children so when there is no check then you are likely to fall to any of these you know a third to mind mind is the affluence uh, generally we find that in most of the cases the people who consume drugs they are from very affluent families they are from rich families the children are paid lot of pocket money there is no scarcity of money everything is available to them they don't have to struggle for anything people or the children or the students who come from uh, relatively deprived families poor families they have to struggle a lot for survival for studies so their likelihood of falling to falling into drugs is lesser in comparison to the people who have lot of money with them and the parents are not devoting enough time for the children and the family we have the very famous example of uh, i don't know uh, i will only call son of sharukh khan what was the name aryan khan i forgot the name aryan khan all these things which i said uh, the availability is there the family is not paying attention and lot of effluence so the person is likely to fall on on the drugs uh, then apart from these there is another reason while effluence leads a person consuming drugs at the same time the poverty unemployment lack of uh, you know occupations for the people also sometimes uh, give an incentive for a person to if not consuming the drugs at the first stage but they may become the uh, workers the ground workers or the foot soldiers of the mafia who operate in this business because they don't have any occupation so some drug operator tells you ki aapko ye kaam karna hai take these drugs and deliver it there to such and such person so he will think lot of money is involved uh, so let me do it so this poverty and unemployment is also one of the reasons uh, this is a remedy what should we do to this the answer of course comes from the diagnosis only the agencies are working for controlling the availability of the drugs they have their own limitations the availability of the people uh, or the personnel or the uh, people who are operating for uh, under the ncb and other agencies but the most important role in this 
is to be played by the society and the educational institutions. In India, we have seen, maybe it is happening in other countries also, uh, that if you know about some person consuming drug or some person trading in drug, we as a responsible citizen of this country don't think that we should inform the authorities. We just keep silent. Hame kya? Uske piche bhi reasons hain. Because uh, later on, the enforcement, uh, in many cases, the witness becomes hostile because uh, they are power pe powerful people, the drug operators, and uh, they can kill you, they can offer you incentives, and various other things. So, the problem is great. But the government should ensure that there should be some system, some helpline number on which we can inform without disclosing our own identity. I think uh, there are some helpline numbers also. I'm yeah. We have started. So, in that case, the people will not be fearful of uh, any adverse consequences as a result of the information that you make available to the authorities. The second is at the family level. Sorry, this is the society level, then the education institutions level. The more we talk about this problem, the better it is. Right? Sometimes we do not discuss this problem. We don't think it is important. And sometimes we may not be aware that what is going on. So, the teachers and the educational institutions, they should talk more and more about these problems. More and more awareness campaigns should be organized. So that the students who at present are not in contact with the drugs, they are forewarned, they become aware, and they, you know, save themselves from falling prey to any of these activities. Because in most of the cases it has been found that the reason for a person resorting to drugs is normally peer pressure. You have a friend, and then he says, kuch nahi hota, kuch nahi hota, le lo, le lo. Those kind of things, you know. So, if the students are, every student is made aware about this problem and the seriousness of the problem. That can be the best department to organize the impact of drugs, various kinds of drugs, there is a range of drugs which are there and what is the impact on the human body, how it operates, how much degree of addiction is there, how it can be, how can you, oh, you know, what, is, uh, what, what can be the remedies, uh, those people who already become victims of this. So, the students should be made aware. This is very important for the teachers and the educational institutions. We should not just stick to our syllabi only. Because teacher, as they say, is a nation builder. So, I think this is an important part of the activity which is required for the nation building. Uh, then uh, comes the role of the family. Now, uh, most of the women are, uh, they have become working women. So, and uh, joint families uh, are uh, fast becoming extinct in India also. Maybe in Himachal Pradesh still there's some areas where joint families are there, but in most of the advanced states, the joint families have all, all already broken because they say adversity unites and adversity, uh, sorry, prosperity divides. So, the moment a person becomes rich, then he thinks of himself and his wife and his children. And the adverse fallout is that there is nobody to take care of children. So, uh, though there can be no you know, answers suggested to this, but whatever possible and wherever possible, whenever parents are back from their, from their uh, business, they should pre take proper precautions, supervision and control of their children. They should keep a watch on their children. They should not allow their children to go for night outs, for parties in big cities now even girls are remaining out of the home for parties so and now the girls are also very fast falling prey to drugs you know and that precisely is one of the reasons that it is leading to their sexual abuse also and also very dangerous diseases like hiv aids is spreading because of drugs so the traditional indian culture, 
uh, which says, now in the name of liberation, we are saying no girl should also be allowed to go out. If the girls start falling prey to this, then the situation becomes all a student or a girl today is the future mother of this country. You know, so the future of the country lies in the women of this nation. So both girls and boys allowed night outs. They should not be uh, given excessive money as pocket money for spending and general vigilance and supervision is very essential if we want to protect our children from this menace of drugs. So uh, these, these are the recommendations for the families and other people. So standing in front of the teachers and the students I would say and request the teachers to discuss more and more in the classes. Maybe sometimes when you are discussing with the class, you may also get some information about who are the people in the class who have some uh, similar, some bad habits like this, you know. So, uh, uh, I was just uh, asked to give an introductory remark. So, I, I think I have overstretched uh, my limit. Uh, so, with these words, I once again express my gratitude to Shri Sharma ji for sparing his valuable time and uh, coming to our uh, university for delivery. Thank you. I personally also feel that when our youth are at the age when they can contribute maximum to our society, to our nation, they become parasites and harm other youth also. So need of our is to work for its eradication and educational institution, parents as well as government has to play a leading role to stop the availability of the drugs.